good boy. need anything. You know, I don't think I've been out for dinner this early since the last time I went out with you. <laughs> Sorry about this surveillance thing. It just came out of nowhere. It's okay. No, it's not. You know, it's not. I'm tired of my cop life cutting into my social life. Funny. I didn't know you had a social life. Real funny. Come on, Vic. You love what you do, and you're great at it. And you just wouldn't be you if you didn't have a crime scene to investigate. Why do you put up with me, huh? I don't. That's why we haven't been out in six months. And I want to change that. All right, I want to change that, starting by not being a cop on call 24 hours a day. I can feel your heart pounding. It's not my heart. It's not my heart. I'm sorry, I can't. This is Bruno. When? All right, where? Have you called the ME yet? All right, look, uh, close off the intersection, and I'll be there as soon as I can, okay? Hope that helps with his driving. Nothing. Hold on, I think Vic might be ready to. Never mind. See you when I see you. 
Why would a blind guy try and cross an intersection like this by himself? For suicide? No, we're still looking for another witness. That's our best bet, right there. The traffic cameras? Yeah. I want every image these things captured today. Those things are only triggered by a north or a southbound car running a red light. Yeah, so? Well, you've got a westbound hit-and-run driver. Even if that camera was triggered, all you're gonna get is a blur. Well, right about now, blur sounds pretty good to me. Excuse me. Detective Bruno. Hey, Vic. I didn't want you to worry what happened to me. What's he doing here? He's giving me a ride home. Look, Mel, I'll just be a few minutes, all right? Vic, we've been here before. We know this is gonna take more than a few minutes. Sorry. Sorry. Cole! working this? I am not working anything. Oh, come on, Mel. Look at you. You've got Cole living here, Vic whining and dining you. I mean, that's a great setup. Have a nice lunch. That is not a setup. Cole is just a friend who happens to live here, who has a room here. Vic is a friend who would like to live here. Hey. Hi. <laughs> hey. You here for lunch? Actually, I'm here to apologize. Now, I know there's no reason for you to believe me, Mel, but I'm serious. I want you to take this as a token of my sincerest apologies. Not just for last night, but for all the other nights I screwed up. Vic, you've never screwed up. You really don't have to do this. Just open it. But not just any bullet, Mel. It's a 38 caliber slug dug from the wall of the garage of the St. Valentine's Day massacre. <laughs> Get out of here. Yeah. Get out of here. I bought it online. Um, and I, I got a certificate of authenticity. <sighs> like, I don't know what to say. Say you'll have dinner with me. Tomorrow night, 9 o'clock, Les Chardons. Uh, no, no phones, no pages. I promise. I'm impressed. All right, well, I gotta go. Um, so tomorrow night, nine o'clock, Les Chardons. Nine o'clock? Yeah. I need the caramel. Why? Yesterday, at the accident, there was a car on the corner when the man was hit. I'm a 
afraid to even ask how you got this one. From the police computer system. You broke into the police computer system? Yes, Mel. You say yes, Mel, like you can just do these things. I can just do these things. I know you can do these things, but you're not allowed to do these things. You do know that you're not allowed to do these things. Can I borrow the car, please, Mel? Just remember to forget everything Nestor taught you about driving, okay? Yes, Mel. And remember everything I taught you about driving, okay? Yes, Mel. Where are you going? The car's registered to William Carter. 